Oh, that slide right there showed a pangolin and my heart just went out to the population of pangolins left in the world. Well, it's World Pangolin Day. They have a whole day dedicated to them. That shows you how important they are. You may have seen that slide and thought to yourself, like my partner is looking at me now, like, what is she talking about? <laughs> I, mean, I didn't pangolins. say anything. Pangolins, of all things, they have a whole day. Yes. So we need a, a world alera day. No, you don't. Oh, really? It's only one an error. <laughs> Yes, so we, we need a day to raise awareness about the mammals and the plight they face all over the world. Like in my country, pangolins are very tasty bushmeat. Well, you'll soon be hearing why you should just leave them be because they have a purpose in the scheme of things. To tell us about this purpose, it's my pleasure to welcome in our studio in Lagos, the West Africa representative of Wild Aid, Linus Una. Good morning. Here. And joining us via Zoom, we have the chair, Pangolin Conservation Guild of Nigeria, of Nigeria Environment Wildlife, Professor Olajumoke Moreni Kiji. Good morning. Is the professor? Yes, she's there. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Um, thank you very much for having let, me. Let me begin with you, Professor. A lot of people don't even know what pangolins are and their usefulness. Let's start from there. Well, thank you. Pangolins are mammals. They are scaly. Uh, they are shy. They are sensitive. Uh, they are found uh, in their own, ecos I mean, surviving and thriving uh, in their own uh, ecosystem or in the ecosystem. So we can say that Pangolins are animals that have been hunted so much that it is driving them to the brink of extinction. Uh, they are eaten as a delicacy also in Nigeria, uh, in Africa, uh, and in China. They are only found on two continents, in Africa uh, and in Asia. Uh, in Asia, in China especially, they are used in traditional medicine. So uh, we see that the population of pangolins in Asia has dwindled. So we now have pangolins being taken away from Africa to Asia. Okay, so this is affecting the population of pangolins that we have in Africa. Now, the thing that is very, very uh, distressing is the fact that Nigeria is now serving as a hub of pangolin trafficking, uh, where other African countries use our borders to take pangolins out of Africa. So we have been labeled as a transit hub, as the most, uh, I mean, a hub that is really, really uh, thriving uh, as a place where pangolins are taken away uh, to other parts of the world. So that is the label that we have as uh, Nigerians now or as uh, a country. And that is why we are concerned about the animals uh, being taken away from our uh, country and from Africa. Now, now, now Linus, um, why are pangolins so important that we need a special day to create awareness for their, for their, well, their, their, their survival? Like the professor rightly mentioned, um, before it used to be ivories, but over the past few years, uh, pangolins have become widely trafficked. And I mean, with almost every seizure you see in Asia, uh, it's always pangolin scales and then sometimes ivory. Their populations are, are becoming highly threatened. And for example, December 2019, two of the pangolin species we find in Africa and in Nigeria as well, were moved from being vulnerable to, to endangered on the ICUN red list, meaning that they are, if nothing is done about their, their, their population, they might go extinct. Mm. So it's really important to create a day like this so people, uh, you raise awareness about this issue among the population mm. and help people understand why we need to protect them. Because if we don't raise awareness, mm -hmm. the, nothing changes in terms of attitude. People continue to, to hunt them, to push them, to, to trade them illegally. So you, the haven't, question... you haven't told us... Mm. 
what use they are. Exactly. Either to the environment or to humans or to... What, what, to what's, what's their place in the ecosystem? Yes. Ecologically, they consume millions of ants and termites. And, and this helps to like, keep the, uh, the soil fertile. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but then the question, another question that will arise from there is, if they are threatened, some would just say, wait a minute, what's the big deal? Why not just yes. repopulate them? Why not just, I mean, they have reproductive, reproductive systems, don't they? So, G good question, really, because I think um, that's one thing conservationists are trying to like, educate the public about. Uh, the reproduction cycle for some of these animals are really not like, say, what we find in grass cutters. Like pangolins, for example, give birth to one offspring per year. And, and so they are really slow producing. So if... if so you if, can't find twins in No, pangolins. no, it's really rare. But I mean, it's something the professor can, can discuss. Pangolins, something you find with, with, with great apes like gorillas. I mean, they are really slow producing. They're not like grass cutters that can give birth to like 10, 15 or 20. Uh, just one offspring a year, and um, it's really, really slow. For um, and if you continue, if you continue like poaching them, hunting them, and and the population is not recovering as quickly as uh, the demand, then obviously, like you get to a point where you wouldn't see them in the wild again. Hmm. Well, no, pro okay. Sorry, <laughs> Professor. Um, I, 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 do pangolins live so close to humans that they can be easily haunted? Yes. Uh, they are found around humans and it's so oh. easy to catch one because, I mean, they, they are defenseless. Uh, they have scales all over the body, but the scales are just made of keratin. In fact, that's one of the problems we have, the scales. People think uh, that the scales have, uh, especially in traditional Chinese medicine, they think that, I mean, they have curative uh, properties. For example, they think it can cure ailments ranging from uh, lactation difficulties to arthritis and so on and so forth. So they poach these animals to get the scales so that they can use uh, in traditional medicine. They also use it around here in traditional medicine, uh, the scales of the animals. So the animals are so easy to catch. For example, if you touch a pangolin, all it does is just call up. The keratin scales are harmless. A, a child can catch a pangolin. I mean, they are defenseless. And, and I'm happy to see Linus there this morning. Uh, and I want to support what he said. Uh, the pangolins are very, very endangered. Why? Because they cannot defend themselves. Uh, they are easily poached. Uh, they give birth to one uh, most of the time. Uh, they, they are not social animals. So they, when we find one in a place, before you find another one, will be several kilometers away. So they are solitary animals. So they don't... Uh, exist in a social group where they can mate all the time, okay? Uh, so we, they have a lot of problems already bedeviling them. And now we have human beings using them for traditional medicine uh, and eating them as a delicacy. Now, we have been eating pangolins in Africa for so long, I mean, as a delicacy. Most people will tell you, in Yoruba, we call it akika or aka. They will tell you it's a, it's a delicacy, it's sweet. Uh, but the real problem we have is the illegal trafficking. It is the most illegally trafficked mammal, uh, even before uh, the elephant uh, ivory, just like Linus said. Uh, so what we have is that the, they have been carted away. I have some uh, examples here. There was a report in uh, 2015 where we had uh, as much as uh, pangolins shipped into Singapore, what 1.3 million uh, uh, Singapore dollars. And also in 2016, we also had tons like th over three tons of pangolin scales, uh, which is one of, the, one of the biggest in 2016, mixed with a container of wood products imported from Nigeria, estimated to be, uh, to contain about 7,500 creatures uh, that have been killed. Uh, that seizure alone was estimated to be worth more than $2 million. Then in 2020, the Nigerian Customs Zone A also seized like 147 sacks of pangolin scales, weighing 9,500.1 kilogram worth of worth 10.26 billion naira, okay? And then in January again, 2021, uh, the Nigerian Customs Service, APAPA Command, Area Command, also intercepted pangolin scales and other mixed endangered species uh, meant for export, worth 952 million naira. It was heading to Vietnam. So uh, Nigeria is now reputed as the main hub for traffickers, you know, sending the scales of African pangolins to Asia, 
where they are used for the for, for medicines. Uh, it, it is a big problem. It's a very big problem. They live around us. In fact, uh, it is very obvious to hunters and bush meat uh, market sellers that they don't find them as much as they used to find them in those days. Now, when you ask hunters, how, when you go on hunting expeditions and you want and you're looking for pangolins, do you really find them? They tell you that it's not like the way it used to be, uh, because in those days they were everywhere. But now they are so few because they have been hunted down. Uh, people are very interested in getting them, poaching, trading, hunting, because they know it will fetch some money. And when you look at the economic situation of the country, you can see that when the hunter sees that one pangolin will fetch him like 10,000 naira to 15,000 naira, he would rather poach and get this pangolin and sell off. So it's a big, big problem we have in the country. Now, the, 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 our problem is not just uh, trading and hunting. It is also the enforcement of laws. Now, the laws are there. We are a signatory to uh, CITES, Convention on International Trade of Endangered Species. Uh, and they categorize this pangolin species under absolute prohibition. So its importation or trade is illegal globally. But our country is not enforcing this law and we're signatory to that law. Uh, so this is a problem. So there's a lot of trading. There's a lot of poaching. There's a lot of selling. There's a lot of movement of pangolins and pangolin scales uh, across the borders and away from the country. And we are faced with a situation whereby if we're not careful, in some years to this time, we will hardly find uh, pangolins in existence again in the country in Africa, okay? Because they would have all been shipped away uh, from the country. Now, these are the issues uh, we, are, we are facing. So they are found around humans and they are easily uh, uh, taken or hunted or poached. Linus, um, Prof has referenced uh, an aspect that I wanted to raise with you, and that is we know that this is a present problem, Mr. Ona. So, uh, and since we have a Ministry of the Environment, one would expect that, okay, perhaps that should be, you know, part of their own responsibility to ensure that those laws that Nigeria is signatory to, those, those, um, those policies that will protect these endangered species, one of which, because I'm sure there are several other endangered species like that, you know, one of which is this pangolin that we're talking about now. So... What has government done or what, what, what plan did government have along these lines since we are signatory to you know, some of these treaties that she talked about? Yeah, I'm not a government official, but of course, if I should take on that question, um, in 2016, to start with, um, a president amended the existing wildlife legislation, the Endangered Species Control of International Traf uh, Traf uh, Trade Amendment Act 2016, um, that lifted, uh, raised the penalties substantially from um, 1,000, for example, to almost 500,000 for anybody who is caught hunting, trading, or dealing with these animals that are listed in the first schedule, like pangolins. And I mean, it can fetch you up to like three years in jail as well for, for doing something like that. So I mean, that's like a very good improve improvement from the existing laws we had. Um, and also, I mean, like you heard her say, uh, customs. I mean, there are a lot of agencies involved when it comes to like, um, wildlife and protecting wildlife and then tackling the illegal wildlife trade. I mean, the Ministry of Environment is the overall umbrella um, ministry involved, but there's also NISRIA, there, there's, there's customs, there's, there's um, the National Park and all of those working together. And I think, yeah, we've had like some interceptions, but the problem with the interception itself is it doesn't give you like a true picture of what the situation is because this, this trade is, is, is heavily on the ground. So it just sort of, I mean, they are working, they are doing their best, but obviously, I mean, most of the seizures we've had with pangolins, for example, typically happen in Asia and not in Nigeria. I mean, a few in Nigeria, but the vast majority is in Asia. But whatever little interception we have in Nigeria, it's also an indication that, yes, I mean, a lot is changing mm. in terms of um, what is happening locally. But, of course, beyond interceptions, you've got to, like, prosecute whoever you've arrested, and that is, like, the main, the main issue. It's not just about arresting people. You've got to prosecute them. Because when you begin to prosecute and, and then penalize people, um, this like sort of creates massive awareness about the laws and stuff like as a deterrent to whoever is even interested in getting into that field itself. Now, now pro Professor, um, how much cooperation are you getting from customs, for instance, in intercepting these um, 
activi activities of the exportation of pangolins and pangolin shells? Well, I must say that um, I'm, I'm impressed uh, because when we started out as a group in 2016 and we called in some law enforcement uh, agents or agencies uh, to our program and we were talking about pangolins, uh, there was so much, most, most of them did not really uh, know much about the pangolins. But I'm, I'm happy now and excited that uh, most law enforcement agents, agencies are talking about pangolins and there are more arrests, you know, by customs. Uh, just like Linus said, uh, before, all the arrests used to be at Singapore, in Vietnam, but now we are making arrests in Nigeria. We are intercepting, we are making the customs are trying, you know, and they are seizing uh, quite a number of uh, uh, pangolin uh, skills that are meant to be uh, taken away from the country. So I'm excited and I'm happy about that. But there's still a big gap. Uh, we, we, what we're advocating for is that we want all the other arms, uh, the Nestria, for instance, uh, 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 and so on, and so, the police, you know, all those that can arrest. And we don't just want uh, arresting at the borders. We want a situation whereby we can actually arrest those handling, because that's what the law says, handling, dealing with this endangered species. You know, arrests, we want arrests to be made. Uh, after investigations, there's a need to take necessary action in line of uh, these environmental laws, guidelines, protocols, conventions, and treaties. You know, uh, the, and, and we should know that the industrial volume of traffic pangolins should spur Nigerian government to go beyond just seizing, but proactively investigate uh, the criminal networks that are involved uh, in this, uh, 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 in what we're talking about. So with successful prosecutions of wildlife traffickers, Nigeria will become a more high risk environment in which to undertake this illicit activity. So these are what we're looking forward to. You know, we don't just want, we have, we have tried, you know, customs, they are trying now. I mean, we have more arrests, but we want it to go beyond that. We want anybody handling, anybody dealing, anybody trading in these animals to be arrested and prosecuted, you know? So we want our judicial system to also rise up to the occasion. We want the Nigerian government to, to key into what we're talking about. Because uh, when we keep on talking about Nigeria is, the, uh, is now a hub, I mean, and, and we have this dent and this embarrassment on our names, it means that uh, we, 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 it, it tells a lot about the country. So we want something to be done uh, by the government uh, to address this situation of illegal trafficking. And, you know, we're just using this pangolin as a point of contact. There are other endangered species and other uh, wildlife uh, tradings going on uh, in Nigeria. Uh, we want the government to do something about this. So okay. that is... Uh, Professor, our... how is World Pangolin Day being celebrated? Well, it is being celebrated all over, all over the world. And I'm especially excited this year because I've seen quite a lot of enthusiasm and quite a lot of people uh, keen in. Uh, before, it used to be a lone uh, ranger place. But now we have so many organizations, we have so many people, we have so many individuals, you know, everybody keen in to, to celebrate, you know, the pangolins. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. So it is being celebrated all over the world today, February 20. Uh, people are doing webinars, uh, they are going, they are running for pangolins, they are doing all sorts of things, I mean, for the pangolin, just to raise awareness, just to make sure that people are aware that there's this particular animal running very fast to extinction, you know, and it's going to tell a lot on our ecosystem if they should go into extinction. And just like Linus said, that one pangolin eats millions of insects, termites and ants, you know. Termites are pests to our crops. You know, when you're a farmer, you will know what it is to have termites on your farm, okay? Or when you build a house and it is taken over by termites, I'm sure you will know what that means. It can raise down the whole house. Now, this is a natural pest controller. Now, if you remove that from the ecosystem, there will be a boom in the, in the population of termites. So God knows what he's doing by putting everything in place, what to check what, preys, predators, you know, and the ecosystem I mean, is balanced with all these things in their places. By the time we remove the pangolin, then there will be a major problem. Perhaps, uh, Prof, the challenge now is uh, messaging to people to understand what this challenge is about. 
you know, uh, Mr. Ona, uh, when you tell people about pangolin, not to hunt pangolin, you are telling them not to hunt bushmeat. <laughs> that's, the, that's the understanding they have as at now. You know, just as she said, you know, go to some hunters. I mean, they're wondering what you're talking about. But perhaps there is a need for us to re-strategize our messaging so people understand that this, uh, this, this segment of, the, of wildlife, Mr. Una, um, they are also important to the ecosystem. And consequently, we need to protect them. Yes, I mean, and um, that is what Wild Aid is doing, really. Uh, that's like our specialty, really, pro producing like behavior change campaigns that help to shift attitude among the public. And in Nigeria, I mean, our approach to this is uh, understanding that, especially among urban residents who are largely unaware about these issues, finding ways to create a message that is culturally resonant. Mm. Uh, it's not about saying, hey, stop eating bushmeat, but it's so much about like running pride campaigns that teach people about the, the, the importance of, of wildlife as like a vital component of our natural heritage. Um, they have to ex explain the ecological importance of some wildlife species that try to like raise awareness about the laws among people and also show them why they need to act. And um, we, we try to like uh, employ a lot of strategies for example, um, producing mini documentaries about okay. rangers that are in the forest working day and night to protect okay. these species and the mm -hmm. dangers they face, um, using celebrities that are really influential among people to, to produce public service announcements that, that really educate people about these issues. You're assuming that that, that celebrity is not a bush meat eating one. <laughs> but but, but <laughs> let, me, let me take this to uh, Prof. Um, uh, you know, World Pangolin Day is a conversation starter, yeah. clearly. What do we need to do to take it further? I mean, some, uh, in my mind now, I see National Geographic, you know, but how far reaching can that be on those two continents that you talk about having the, the, the most population of, of, of pangolin? So from this World Pangolin Day, where do we go from here? Or wait till another year? No, we don't wait for another year. In fact, we are always working. Uh, in, in the Pangolin Conservation Guild, Nigeria, what we do is that, well, apart from raising awareness, we are also concerned about making sure that we help these animals, we save them uh, from poachers. So what we do is we rescue. We rescue them away from traders, from poachers, from hunters, uh, when we get them. Uh, when we rescue them, we rehabilitate them, we take care of them, and then we release them into protected forest areas. Uh, we have done this for quite a large number of pangolins all over Nigeria. We get calls from all over Nigeria to pick up pangolins. Once we pick them up, some of them are so stressed, some of them are sick, some of them we get them when they are at the brink of just dying off. So what we do, our vets attend to them, they take care of them, administer drugs, make sure that we take care of their wounds and so on and so forth. I mean, if they are stressed, we try to help them. And then after that, when they are stable, we release them into protected forest areas where we know they will thrive, give birth. In fact, we have had instances where pangolins we saved uh, gave birth uh, to young ones. So that is what we do. Then we also try to one-on-one -on -one, uh, get uh, involved with stakeholders, with the law enforcement agencies. Uh, we try, and then we also try to, I mean, advocate uh, and, and, and try to speak to government bodies, how they can help. Because just as you rightly said, uh, somebody's profession is to hunt and to kill so that they can fend for their families. So how do you tell that kind of person, don't kill bushmeat or don't, don't sell bushmeat? We think that if this kind of people, the hunters, the bushmeat sellers, are empowered by the government. Now, there are other animals that are not endangered and are not threatened and are of least concern. For example, grass cutters can be raised. Poultry can be done, you know. And other, I mean, so we're encouraging uh, government bodies, you know, of, 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 at, at different levels to help see to the empowerment of these farmers, uh, of these hunters, of these bushmeat sellers, so that they can shift focus away from hunting and selling uh, pangolins. You know, so these are the things we're trying to do. 
Okay, apart from raising awareness, apart from uh, trying to, uh, uh, I mean, tell the populace the importance of the pangolins and the ecosystem, we rescue pangolins, we rehabilitate them, and then we release them to protected forest areas. And we also carry out research on pangolins so that we can better know how to help them uh, survive and thrive so that they don't go into extinction. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, happy World Pangolin Day to you all. Professor Olajumoke Moreni Keji, Chair, Pangolin Conservation Guild, Nigeria, as well as uh, Linus Una, uh, West Africa representative of Wild Aid. Thank you very much for coming to create awareness about the pangolin and telling us about World Pangolin Day. Happy Pangolin, happy World Pangolin Day to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Sunrise will be right back with the home stretch in just a moment. Do stay with us. <laughs>